So, good morning and uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, to contribute to this uh, British Society of Audiology e-conference. And uh, my topic for the presentation today is thoughts about suicide and self-harm in patients with tinnitus and hyperacusis. And uh, I, um, my name is Hajir Aj and uh, I work in um, the Royal Surrey uh, County Hospital and uh, my main role is to lead a tinnitus and hyperacusis uh, team in, in the hospital and, uh, and also I contribute to, uh, to clinical research and this is study is one of the studies that we have uh, conducted in our uh, tinnitus clinic which I am going to share with you. The picture here is, is my team and um, uh, Jennifer Viffin and Jenny Stevens, Gemma Hatton, myself and Katie O'Brien uh, who is our research assistant and um, so uh, the, uh, the, we have clinics every day and um, my colleagues and I see patients and we offer cognitive behavior therapy uh, focused on tinnitus and hyperacusis as well as misophonia rehabilitation. So if any of you is interested to, um, to know about how, how does it feel like to be an audiologist who is a spe specialized in tinnitus and hyperacusis rehabilitation, I'm sure my colleagues uh, will be more than happy to share their experience with you. So feel free to get in touch with our department and, um, and ask to speak with them. So first the definitions. So in this uh, presentation, the definitions that I use for tinnitus and hyperacusis is that tinnitus is a sensation of the sound in the ears or head without any external acoustic sound source. There are other definitions for tinnitus as well, but this is the one that I'm using in this presentation. And hyperacusis is intolerance to everyday sounds in a way that it causes significant distress and impairment in the individual's day-to-day -day activities and their mood. Also for hyperacusis, there are different uh, definitions uh, available, but this is the one that I'm using um, throughout this presentation. In the studies that um, we have done in our tinnitus and hyperacusis uh, research activities, and um, they, we had uh, international collaborators from different universities and different medical and science disciplines, and uh, you see uh, some of my uh, international collaborators in this slide, which I would like to acknowledge their help in different studies that we have done. So there are many studies um, that suggest that there are a high prevalence of psychological disturbances in people who have tinnitus, hyperacusis, and misophonia. And, um, and people who are, have uh, psychological disturbances such as anxiety, depression, they are uh, more likely to develop suicidal or self-harm ideations. And um, so this is not about the actually uh, suicide or self-harm attempt uh, or, or committing those, but is even thinking about so whether the idea have crossed their mind. And, and it is important to explore whether the idea of uh, suicide or self-harm uh, crossed their mind because um, although the majority of the people who may have suicidal or self-harm ideations do not commit suicide, but it is the first step. Um, so it is important to be explored and uh, managed properly if, uh, if needed. So the aim of this study that we did wanted to see what is the prevalence of factors related to suicidal and self-harm ideations in patients with tinnitus and hyperacusis who were seen in an NHS uh, outpatient uh, clinic. The method used in our study was a service evaluation uh, with a correlational design, uh, which was in the tinnitus and hyperacusis therapy clinic at the Royal Surrey County Hospital in Guildford. And all of the patients who were included 
um, in, who were seen in a one-year period were asked to complete a range of questionnaires and, um, and so the, this, this study is based on those data which is gathered in those questionnaires. So the total number of patients who were seen in, in, in that one year period was 402 patients and the average age was 57 years and um, almost half of them were, were male and half female. And the mean Puritan average audiometric threshold that frequencies from 250 to 4 kilohertz was about 25 decibel in both years and the mean uncomfortable loudness levels, ULLs, at frequencies between um, 250 and 8,000 hertz were 83 decibels for right and the left ear. But not all of these 402 people wanted to contribute um, to this um, study. And um, so I will I will give you the exact number of people who actually took part and the differences between those who participated and those who did not participate in terms of the demographic um, data. And, uh, but that's in the, um, um, in the results section of this presentation. So let's carry on with the methods. So we use different measurement instruments. So to, to assess the suicidal and self-harm ideations, patients were asked a question about suicidal thoughts taken from patient health questionnaire PHQ-9, uh, item 9, which the question asked, over the last two weeks, how often have you been bothered by thoughts that you would be better off dead, dead or hurting yourself in some way? And the answers were not at all, several days, more than half the days, and nearly every day. So patients were answered this question. And in addition to this, they also uh, completed a wide range of questionnaires, which are uh, parts of their routine um, care in the tinnitus clinic. So tinnitus handicap inventory uh, um, was completed. And um, the hyperacusis questionnaire was used to assess the impact of hyperacusis on the patient's life. And um, so in, in, in hyperacusis questionnaire has 14 items and the, the range of the scores are from 0 to 42 and the scores above 26 was suggested for with, uh, uh, with one of the studies with news and colleagues in 2010 that to be considered as uh, the cutoff to indicate hyperacusis handicap. We have, in, in a different paper, we have um, re-evaluated re this cutoff point and we arrived at a different cutoff point which needs to be used for hyperacusis questionnaire. If you are interested to know about that, please feel free to email me. I'm happy to share that research paper on the criteria on hyperacusis questionnaire for hyperacusis handicap with you. Well, in this study, we have used the cut of a score of 26 as an indication of hyperacusis handicap. And uh, also, patients that had to uh, complete a visual analog scale on a, um, which about the, the loudness of their tinnitus, the annoyance that their tinnitus caused, and the effect of the tinnitus on their life. And the visual analog scale is basically they have to give you uh, choose a number on a line uh, from 0 to 10 to say say how loud your tinnitus was uh, within the last month. 0 means no tinnitus at all and 10 is the loudest that you can imagine. And uh, same for the annoyance, how annoying your tinnitus was in the last month. 0 will be not annoying at all, 10 be uh, extremely annoying. And uh, on the effect of life, 0 would be tinnitus has no impact on my life and tennis tends to have an extreme impact on life. So in, in addition to um, tinnitus and hyperacusis specific questionnaires, we also uh, asked them to complete uh, a questionnaire on insomnia because uh, sleep disturbances are very common in people with, with tinnitus. 
and um, so and it's very critical to be addressed in the therapy. So as a part of the routine care, we do ask them to complete insomnia severity index questionnaire, and uh, that you have the and it can give you different categories of insomnia as no insomnia or a mild insomnia or uh, severe insomnia. People also are asked to complete a questionnaire on anxiety and depression symptoms. As I have indicated at the beginning of this presentation, anxiety and depression uh, same symptoms are uh, quite prevalent among patients with tinnitus and hyperacusis and um, so it is important to screen for them and specifically in our uh, clinics which we offer a specialized version of the cognitive behavior therapy which focuses on tinnitus, hyperacusis and misophonia rehabilitation it is vital to know uh, whether they have symptoms of anxiety and depression and if they do have these symptoms they also need to be referred to mental health services for further assessments and appropriate psychological interventions for their underlying anxiety and depression. The study had the uh, ethical approval uh, and the approval by the research and development department at the Royal Surrey County Hospital. So in terms of the analysis of the data, and uh, we used uh, correlations and also we used uh, a multinomial uh, logistic regression analysis, which can give us a risk relative risk ratio of um, suicidal and self-harm ideations based on their tinnitus handicap, hyperacusis handicap scores and other uh, variables that I'm going to discuss with you in the future slides. So from 402 patients who were seen in that one year period, only 150 people uh, agreed to complete survey questionnaires, including the question about suicidal and self-harm ideations, which gives us a response rate of 37%, and uh, which is reasonably okay in studies that you do in clinical practice because people do not have to complete these questionnaires. So they were, everyone were asked whether they want to contribute, but uh, only 37 said they were okay to uh, to do that. So we have 150 uh, people who were included to their study by giving their questionnaires. So the, the vital uh, question here is that whether there is any significant difference in the characteristics of people who agreed to complete the questionnaires and those who did not. Because if that's a yes, then that somehow can uh, introduce uh, some sort of a selection bias uh, in the study. So we, we compared the, uh, the, the characteristics of these two groups, and this shows in this um, table here. So we looked at their age, uh, Puritan, Puritan average of the better ear and the worse ear, average of the ULLs, in the year with the lower ULLs, tinnitus, the scores on tinnitus handicap inventory, hyperacusis questionnaire, visual analog scale for tinnitus loudness, tinnitus annoyance, and effect on life, their score on the insomnia severity index, and, uh, and their scores on anxiety and depression uh, measures. So, and as you can see here, the, there was no significant difference between the group between the responders and non-responders in all of these measures, except from just one, which is the visual analog scale of the tinnitus loudness, which in the group that agreed to take part in the study, the, uh, the, uh, the mean was 6.5 out of 10, and in the group that didn't want to take part, the mean loudness of the tinnitus uh, as rated on a visual analog scale, 0 to 10 scale, was 6. And so this was the only difference between the two groups. 
and uh, apart from that everything else there was no significant difference which is a good indication that shows that the group that actually uh, took part in the study were representative of the overall sample or study population in that one year period so what was the result what was the prevalence of suicidal and self-harm ideations among those 150 people who took part so this table here shows the people's answer to this question over the last two weeks how often have you been bothered by the thoughts that you would be better off dead or hurting yourself in some way so as you can see here about just over 12 percent of the people have some levels of suicidal and self-harm ideations so 12 percent of the patients who were seen in a tinnitus and hyperacusis clinic did have some level of suicidal and self-harm ideations. It is worth noting that um, none of these people actually have committed uh, suicide and, uh, and the majority of them did not actually have any plan to, um, to, to do anything about these thoughts that came to their mind. Uh, two people had some plans uh, to actually uh, were contemplating some ideas of uh, hurting themselves and uh, which they were identified by uh, asking this question and uh, we, we have this uh, uh, support in our department which anyone who have suicidal or self-harm ideations and specifically if they have any plan uh, we can uh, get them uh, seen by our uncle psychiatrist in the hospital and uh, they provide an appropriate support for them which this is what we uh, we did in those scenarios so this is the um, the risk ratio analysis that we did so we, we wanted to see who are the people who are at higher risk of developing suicidal and self-harm ideations among people who come to a tinnitus and hyperacusis clinic and as shown in this table tinnitus handicap hyperacusis handicap anxiety levels insomnia none of them were increasing the risk of developing these thoughts uh, the only thing that was significantly increasing the risk of suicidal and self-harm ideations was depression so abnormal depression scores on this questionnaire of hyper uh, hospital anxiety and depression scale in fact people who had abnormal score on the depression scale they were six times more likely to develop these thoughts so it is very important in terms of clinical implication so if you see patients with tinnitus and they're suffering from very low mood it is very important to uh, to ask them about suicidal and self-harm ideations because if they have such things you can actually help them and put them in the right contact uh, to be um, helped and uh, sometimes audiologists or non-psychologists may be hesitating in asking the question and uh, in a fear that patient may start thinking about it but th there is no evidence of you inquiring about suicidal thoughts actually make the suicidal thoughts uh, or uh, act of suicide more likely in fact the handbook of psychiatry uh, mentions that uh, inquiring about suicidal thoughts actually make people um, feel a bit better uh, under, uh, better understood by their clinician which may reduce the risk of uh, suicidal behavior so the recommendation is if the patients have tinnitus and they feel suffering from low mood it is very important to actually ask about uh, these uh, suicidal ideations and um, so this uh, uh, a tinnitus and hyperacusis therapy masterclass is uh, one of the courses that can help audiologists to build their uh, skillfulness and uh, competencies and knowledge required to deal with patients with tinnitus and hyperacusis suicidal and self-harm ideations depression and tinnitus cognitive behavior therapy screening for mental health illness are among important uh, key topics in this uh, master class and a conference on hyperacusis will be in July in London in Birkbeck College University of London 
uh, if you are interested. And so it has free entry for students, people who present uh, in the conference, as well as qualified hearing healthcare professionals who are job seeking and are on, uh, not employed at the moment. They can take part uh, in this event as well. And um, and lastly, this is uh, our um, hospital, um, our hospital postcard, and our hospital is recruiting for audiologists and those who are interested to specialize in different audiology specialities, including tinnitus. Uh, they can benefit from the support, education, and training which the hospital provides. I'm happy to share uh, the uh, full text of the articles that I talked about in this presentation with you, so uh, please feel free to email me, um, uh, and uh, I'm happy to be of any help if needed. Thank you very much.